one day boys bought a shop hollow tree farm and portable sawmill and this is a special video it's for you people that are thinking about getting a sawmill or you've got your sawmill set up and you're ready to cut your first log and kind of wanting to know what to expect and it's an exciting time so let's get that first log up there and start making some sawdust the first thing you want to do is have your log stops pulled up so that your log doesn't go rolling off the mill so uh, we're all set up now and I'm going to bring that log around and get her loaded up. So the next step is to clamp that log down and then we'll make some decisions about how we're going to cut it up. There's no substitute for a good can hook. If you don't have one, get one. Uh, it makes a world of difference in handling the log. This one's got a good bite on the log. It's got a five foot handle that gives you a lot of turning leverage and uh, I'd be lost without it. And the idea is you want to just come in as low as you can so you can lift with your legs and if you like the way the log lays that's fine otherwise you can turn it to get it exactly the way you want it and you can see it's trying to roll back on me when I release it it really pays to have a wedge that you can stick in there to hold it and I've got one that I made special for this mill it's got kind of a t-track on it that slides right on So when you roll the log up against those stops, you can slide that in and it doesn't roll back. So we'll set our clamps. And I like to go about a third of the way up on the log. And you can see it's good and solid. You're not going to move that log while you're cutting it. And that's important. And we can take that clamp out or leave it in. And we're ready to start looking at making our cut. I've marked up this log to give you an idea of how we're going to slice it up. And when you're getting started out uh, on your first few logs or maybe more, not a bad idea just to kind of help you visualize what's inside the log. I've marked everything to inch and an eighth thick boards. And the reason is that's the most common thickness uh, that I mill. So we'll make our first cut, our slabbing cut, and this will come off as basically waste. Hopefully we'll get another board underneath that. We'll see. Uh, when we get down a little bit, we'll turn the log 90 degrees. So this side will be up. Do the same thing. Make a slabbing cut and then maybe cut another board or two. Turn it 90 degrees. Repeat the process. And when we get to our last turn, this side is on top, then we'll come down and we'll just start slicing off boards. Now, the advantage of this pattern is that it keeps the center of the growth rings centered in the boards, if that makes sense. And that will give you the least drawing defect, the least amount of warpage and stress as, as, uh, as the boards dry. Now, ideally, we'd have a perfectly round, straight log to cut. But nature almost never makes them that way. So you deal with what you've got. This one, it's heavier at the far end, and it's got a little bit of a bow to it you can, that you can see. So those are things that we'll have to accommodate. We may have to adjust our cutting pattern a little bit uh, because of that. But uh, we'll get some good lumber out of this log. And as another point, uh, when possible, personally, I like to start with the narrow end uh, and cut towards the heavier end of the log. Now, before we fire this baby up, let's go over a few things. First of all, you. You should have eye protection, hearing protection. You should be wearing steel-toed boots. Uh, things can fall on you. Things make a lot of noise. 
and things can get thrown back in your face. So keep yourself protected and be sure to remember to tension down the blade before you start the engine. Now this is the voice of experience speaking. First log I ever cut. I was so excited. I had the log on the mill and it was a nice piece of walnut and I started up the engine, let it warm up a minute, gave it full throttle and BAM! The blade came off the band wheels. Put a kink in the blade, basically destroyed a brand new blade before I even touched it to the wood. Just remember to tension up the blade first and save yourself that aggravation. Well, I didn't quite go low enough to accommodate for the sweep in the log, so just barely nicked the bark here. So we're going to come down our next cut, and that'll be a slabbing cut too, and then uh, we'll get some boards after that one for sure. We're going to take one more cut than we'd planned to just because there was more sweep than we thought. Alright, so now I'm ready to rotate it 90 degrees. Have to try to turn on its own there a little bit. I put a chalk under it to kind of help hold it for now. And uh, that comes in handy more times than you might think. And get a low grip, try and Lift with your legs as much as you can. Now you're going to see why it's so important to have your log stop square to your sawmill. Because we're going to turn this log until the flat is right even with the edge of that log stop. And that's where we're going to clamp it down. As long as that's square, then our next cut is going to be square to the first one we made. Just bring it right on around here until it's just even with our log stop and that's where we'll clamp her down. This is where it is really nice to have a helper but even without one if you think about what you're doing you can get her done. If there's a little bit of gap there, you need to turn it just a bit more. Usually you can just kind of tweak it and get it to hold.
look like much. We'll edge it, maybe get a little lumber out of it. And we'll drop down a little more board before we, uh, before we turn it. See, we're starting to get into some boards. Well, I'll show you how to edge off that bark a little bit later. There we go. Now you want to be careful to remember to drop down your log stops. There is nothing to keep that mill from cutting into it. And there's basically two kinds of sawyers. Those who have cut into their log stops and those who will do it again. So I've done it several times. I expect I'll do it again, but uh, hopefully I won't embarrass myself in this video that way. Uh, usually it happens when you're sawing in front of other people, you're a little bit distracted and uh, you forget, so put them down. All of the boards that need edging, I just set aside close to the mill and then I'll put them back on later. And we're ready to turn this log. There we go. Drop our log, log stops down enough, make sure we don't cut into them. There we go. I took the slabs and I made two parallel piles with them. That way I can set my boards on those piles like this. Come in later with the front end loader, pick them up and carry them to the drawing area. So everything is a matter of thinking ahead. What's the next step? Then what are you going to do after that? I try to get everything to flow together as smoothly as possible.
But my advice to you would be edge the boards as you get to them. So right now I've got this cant down to three and three quarters of an inch thick. So I'll use that as a backing to hold those boards straight up and down while I edge them. But then I'll come back to my cant, cut it off at two and a half inches, then an inch and a quarter. That'll give me my last three boards and I'll be done. We can do about three at a time. That seems to work out pretty well. There, that'll hold them securely. And you want to get the straightest side down. That'll give you the flattest cut. Yeah, these won't amount to much, but we'll get what we can out of them. Well, as you can see, 
we came pretty close to hitting that log stop. Uh, another cut, and we would have cut into it. And uh, I've bumped it before, and don't like doing that. So now to make sure that doesn't happen, we're going to drop it all the way down and swing that cleat around so it bites into that can. And the other thing that I want to do is slide it forward there, so support it on that last log cross bunk. That way uh, it won't tend to droop down a little as we cut. So we'll clamp it down there and finish it up. And we're going to leave all the boards on there as we cut, and that way the weight of each board will help hold everything below it flat. This is where, if there's any stress in the wood, it's going to start to try to bow one way or the other. So this will help avoid that. Well, let's tally up how we did this afternoon. Got 13 pieces, 9 feet long, count them 8 inches wide, and by my calculations, figure an inch thick, uh, that's uh, 13 times 9 times 8 divided by 12 gives us 78 board feet. So, at 2 bucks a board foot, that's uh, 150 bucks plus change. Uh, it's wide oak, not the easiest to cut, but Typically, something like this, uh, half hour at the most. The mill just sails right through it. So, not bad for a half hour's work. We'll pick this up with the tractor, carry it back to the drying area, get it stickered, and get started air drying. So, um, I hope this uh, introduction worked well for you. A lot of different ways to saw a log. This isn't the only way to do it. Um, so get, go online, look up, uh, you can Google like log sawing patterns you get for quarter sawing and how to cut a 6x6 uh, six six or a 4x4 four by, four by four cant out of the middle of it, that type of thing. And uh, if you have any comments, post them below and I'll answer them as best I can. So thanks for stopping by and keep making sawdust. Bye.